catastrophe education biology classes today our topic is based on the mitotic cell cycle so what is cell the first question is what is cell cell is the basic structure and function unit of life why cell division is required for protection and maintenance for an example hey, I just created a think that our skin cut it or wound it or burn so at that particular area actually what happened the cells are damaged so it is very necessary to replace the damaged cells with the refreshing new cells so cell division is extremely important however in our previous videos we understand that some of the cells of our body after fully differentiation they will never ever divide during their entire life for the nerve cells okay there is a reason a uh, hypothetical reason behind it one um, issue is that the nerve cells do not have the centriole that do not divide that is the molecular aspect but one easy hypothetical example is that the memory the information in our brain is actually maintained or stored in the neurons so if the neural cell became divided and the new neurons in the produce and old neurons are damaged or dead so memory will immediately lost so it is very important to continue the journey entire life without dividing and that path is chosen by the neuronal cells uh, what is cell cycle the cell cycle is a biomolecular process by which the mother cell is divided into two or more daughter cell having same or different nuclear material if divided two mother cell and having the same genetical material it is known as the mitosis if divided into four or more and uh, produce different size and shape and half of the genetic material it is known as the meiosis however the meiosis cycle and the production of the daughter cell number from the mother cell is uh, depend on the ploidy condition of the species it is and the number vary in the different species and according to the ploidy condition ploidy condition means <clears throat> the ploidy condition is known as the ploidy condition is known as the genetical volume think about the n number it is known as the haploid 2a diploid 3a triploid 4a tetraploid so this is known as the ploidy condition okay now in the mitotic cell division the ploidy condition of the cell will never ever change a diploid must be diploid from beginning to the end of the cell cycle only the chromosomal volume became changed why i am telling you that because we normally think in the g1 phase the cell became 2a diploid condition in the s phase there is a replication and produce the 4a in the g2 phase there is a 4a and in the meta phase or m phase the 4a is split into the 2n and 2n and produce the two daughter cell but that doesn't mean the 2n became 4n that mean it is become tetraploid no it is not tetraploid it is diploid just the chromosomal content are getting doubled because uh, what happened this is in normal g1 phase or g0 phase this is called a chromatid this is called a chromatid but after s phase 
it consists like this structure so this is another chromatin this is at that time this is these two are known as a sister chromatid sister chromatid so that doesn't mean that it, it is get doubled in number no it never get doubled in number ploidy doesn't change only the volume of the genetic material or chromosomal content getting doubled and then split so the first thing uh, the cell cycle is divided into two major phases i phase and m phase the i phase consists g1 s and g2 what happened in the g1 phase that g1 phase is responsible for the prepare for the s phase means all the necessary proteins required for the dna replication all the necessary proteins responsible for the um, cell growth all the uh, macronutrients micronutrients assimilation production of the energy as well as the several important factor that will later use in the uh, mitotic cell division or especially in the m phase that are produced by the g1 phase in point of view of dna replication the pre initiation complex of the replication is produced in the g1 phase but uh, the beauty is the cell will never enter into the s phase immediately okay they must cross the g1 checkpoint g1 checkpoint after the crossing the g1 checkpoint they will enter into the s phase what happened if you land in a foreign country so the first they check our passport if we are clear then they will allow us to visit their country if we are not they will take us into a prison or uh, um, they will return us into our own country and back so what happened the same thing happened in the g1 phase checkpoint the cell is preparing for the s phase so it is very important to check the pre initiation complex of replication is good or not all the necessary um, things are ready for the s phase or not or if there is some dna mutation and that cannot be changed or cannot be altered so they stop it no no then s phase will be there but if there is everything good so this check so the cell will end override the checkpoint and enter the s phase so the second phase is the s phase so the g1 phase is very lengthy it is 11 hours is required for such thing the s phase is responsible for the dna synthesis simply known as the or dna replication phase where the chromosomal content the nuclear material content is become doubled in volume not in number and it be doubled in volume next the s phase will enter into the g2 phase this is the g2 phase the s phase required about 8 hours and g2 phase then about 4 hours during the g2 phase what happened the newly synthesized dna or the newly replicated dna that are responsible for the double volume of the genetic material must be checked by several time of uh, enzymes proteins to uh, find out where the mutations are where there is a problem and to check such thing so this is all happened in the g2 phase now the question is a uh, view of up to this view we understand what happened in general now we have to understand what is the chromatin condensation and relaxation what happened <laughs> prepare the cell to produce this is uh, known as the this is known as the chromatin this is a totally condensed means a compact structure for the replication and to produce initiation and to find out the problem the chromatin must be open in a dna form okay the chromatin must be this is called the chromatin condensation form and this is called as a chromatin relaxation form in the g1 phase we understand the process is responsible for the pre initiation complex means dna must be open in a particular 
promoter side must be uh, there must be bind of the several kind of enzyme in the ace phase the dna replication must be done so for this the dna must act as a template we already know in the g2 phase the enzymes are scanning every nucleotide of the dna to find out the mutation and to uh, correct it so in all such cases in the total i phase the chromatin must be in a relaxed form rather than in a condensed form right but in the m phase there is no dna replication there is no initiation of replication there is no dna checking only the nuclear material must be segregated into the two daughter cell to to segregate the daughter it is most important to make the chromatin condensation that means from relaxed form to a highly condensed or compact form so this all thing are happen in the m phase actually in the initiation of the m phase the first phase of the m phase is known as the pro phase the pro phase is the phase that are with the pro phase are further divided into two part the first part of the pro phase and the second part of the pro phase the first part of the process we can see that chromatin condensation means the relaxed dna molecule are condensed in the chromatin form okay so this is the first phase where the chromatin condensation are produced now in the first phase of the process two important protein and their function is very important one is the condensing another is the cohesion the condensin name is very simple that condensin is responsible for the condensation actually condensin is actually doing what actually encircling the dna molecule okay actually think about that this is a dna molecule and condensin are encircling the dna molecule three dimensionally and push them to make the compact structure or condensation during that condition the sister chromatin that is the two sister chromatin are supported okay condensins are doing condensation there is a high tension so to support such tension the two sister chromatin are hold by the cohesin molecule so this is all about the first phase of the uh, process now that in the later phase of the process what happened the nucleus the nucleus this is the nucleus the nuclear material became degraded the nuclear material became degraded okay this is very necessary because there must be um, segregation take place so new nucleus are must be degraded so that happened in the later phase of the process next the pro meta phase so we understand that in the process the first half process first half of the process is responsible for the chromatic condensation by the two protein condensin and cohesin in general and in the next phase the nuclear envelope are degraded including the npc i am not getting uh, into you in a very detail this is the overall now what happened uh, in the pro meta phase to understand the pro meta phase we must understand two structure one is centromere another is the kinase core centromere is what in a particular chromosome a particular in, in any chromosome a particular site must be there where is a repetitive dna sequence are there a repetitive dna sequence this is called the centromere the beauty of that the so many important proteins and a large number of protein are ultimately bind with that particular part this is called the centromere the centromere are present whether the cell in the g0 phase doing housekeeping function or at any stage of the cell cycle we we, we always found the centromere but kinase core is actually find we um, can find out in in particularly during the m phase of the cell cycle what happened a button like structure proteinia structure a button like structure is actually present a link with this uh, centromere and this is called the kinase core kinase core doing what kinase core is actually responsible for this the microtubules are bind with the kinase core and responsible to segregate the chromosome into 
two different poles okay so this all happened in the uh, pro metabase kinetic or bind with the microtubule and that is the responsible and, and, and the later the centrosome are also bind with the microtubule means kind of some microtubule like this kind of thing microtubule like this kind of thing in one hand they bind with the kinetic of the chromosome in another hand they will bind with the centrosome of the chromosome okay centrosome of the chromosome and this is the microtubule so binding with the centrosome and microtubule, they are known as the mitotic spindle. This is a very important term. They are known as the mitotic spindle. Right? Okay. They are known as the mitotic spindle. Now what happened? Now in the metaphase, in the next metaphase, all the uh, chromosome with their sister chromatid are present in the equatorial region means at the middle that this is the nuclear envelope that is degraded here uh, here is the some centrosomes here is the some centrosome and all the your um, sister chromatid are present at this stage okay and these are the microtubule okay these are the microtubule they are try to segregate into the two different nuclei okay now what happened in the anaphase Anaphase is divided into two major parts, anaphase A and anaphase B. Anaphase A is a very uh, slow separating st state, means the separation of the two sister chromatid, think about it, this is the sister chromatid, okay, this is the sister chromatid, they are become segregated from each other, one is became here and another one became here, this, this, this segregation step is very slow in the anaphase A. But in the anaphase B, the segregation process is very fast due to breakdown of the ATP. The additional energy are provided to firstly separate the sister chromatid from each other. In the telophase or also called chelophase is the phase where the new that there is a formation of the two nucleus and the separation of the two nucleus but the cytoplasm are still linked and cell is look like a dumbbell shaped structure this is the telophase so later the cytokinesis is required to which the cell must be break and to produce the two cells daughter cell so what happened in the telophase the nucleus is divided but the cell fully not divided into two daughter cells okay this is known as the syncytial stage. It is very important. It is known as the syncytial stage. Syncytial term means when a single cytoplasm containing more than one nucleus. Here we can see that in a particular stage there is a simply cytoplasm is common but two nucleus is there. So this is a syncytial stage. Okay, More than one nucleus is present with a common cyto cytoplasm is called syncytial stage. So after the chelophase or telophase, there is a cytokinesis phase where the two daughter cells are become fully separated from each other. And after the um, cytokinesis, there must be two phases. Uh, two um, things can be happening. One, the cell may remain in the G0 phase and doing their housekeeping functions, or cell may enter into another round of uh, cell cycle that is depend on the cell to cell. Now think about it, if it is a neuronal cell, so it will become in a G0 state. If it is a hepatic cell, it will become a G0 phase and only enter into the G1 phase in case of the hepatic cell, uh, um, if there will be need. And if it is a skin cell, so it is always enter and uh, finish the M phase and always enter into the G1 phase, right? So this is all about the cell cycle. Now what is a cycling? The role of the cyclin and CDK are very important. The different cyclin and CDK are present in the different stages of the cell cycle and they promote all the functions. Think about it. Prophase, we know the condensin and coenzyme are working. But how? How it working? Because the cyclin and CDK has phosphorylate this protein to activate. Okay, kinetochore bind with the microtubule. Why? Because the particular cyclin CDK phosphorylate this protein and activate. Okay, two, two sister chromatid are uh, in an equatorial um, region. 
who push them to the equatorial region some proteins that are phosphorylated by the cyclin silicate in the anaphase we can see that two uh, um, sister chromatids are separated okay how it has been possible because the protein involved in the separation of the sister chromatid is activated by the cyclin silicate in the telophase uh, syncytial cytoplasm happen in the cytokinesis the two cytoplasm are separated but how it is dependent by the actin and myosin 2 mm, uh, myosin 2 complex is responsible to mediate these things but how because the cyclin and cdk are phosphorylated and activated such actin and myosin 2 complex to perform the cytokinesis in the g1 phase cell are preparing for the initiation of the replication by some protein such proteins is activated by the cyclin cdk in the ACE phase, DNA are replicated, but the replicable proteins and the proteins involved in the DNA replication are activated by the cyclic CDK. The proteins are responsible for the checking of the error in the DNA mutation in the G2 phase are activated by the cyclic CDK. So this is the beauty of the cyclic CDK that are responsible uh, for this all cell cycle. So we can understand what is the role of the cyclin cyclin and CDK cyclin dependent kinase now the last thing which is a very important that in each cell cycle the DNA replication must be occur once and only once during the cell cycle however there are several important uh, background of it but in regarding to cell cycle the most important thing is up to now I am telling you about that the cell cycle protein or cyclin are always phosphorylate and activate the other proteins required for the cell cycle but this is not always done by the um, cyclin CDK. Cyclin CDK is also responsible to inhibit some protein. In the other hand is actually activate some protein in the other hand in actually inhibit some protein. What happened? Think about it. Some cyclin and CDK are activated the protein in the S phase in the S phase that are responsible for the DNA replication. But in the G2 phase, there is no DNA replication. So to stop the DNA replication, you must stop the proteins behind it. That proteins are activated in the A phase. But when cell enter into the G2 phase, the G2 cyclin are irreversibly inactivate such protein that are activated in the A phase. So DNA replication will immediately stop, right? In the, in the um, metaphase, there is no checking of the mutation because there is a condensation. Here the DNA has been relaxation phase, here is the condensation phase. So the proteins are responsible for the relaxation is become irreversibly inhibited by the process. And the condensation contain, uh, developing protein are become activated. So, from this uh, factor, we can understand that the cyclin CDK is not only activate but also inhibit the protein and push the cell toward the unidirectional way because after the G1 phase, it will become A phase. So this is the way that DNA replication occur once and only once in the cell cycle and cell cycle only go in a forward direction, never run backward direction because the um, later cycling is became inhibited by the um, fresh stage okay a cycling inhibited by the g2 stage so there will be no chance to back a space will be stuck so this is all about the mitotic cell cycle uh, if you understand this uh, please like and share the video